Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video. All right, uploaded by the priest Tazama. All right, the GMS Dallas camp. As you can see here, right, let's pull it up. GMS Soldier of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai is the name of his channel. Subscribe and be edified. The title of the video that I will be responding to is when your whole motive is to cut someone, you can look foolish. All right, now um, this is a uh, video done by Sakari Southeast where they're uh, going back and forth with a Christian. Typical Christian rhetoric, you know, basically we don't have to keep the laws, you know, uh, all of the heathen can be saved. Typical Christian talking points, which can be dealt with very easily. All right, and you know, some parts of this video, um, this uh, brother here, he was, he was, you know, cutting this Christian. All right, but as you see the uh, title of the priest Tazama's video, okay, when your whole motive is to cut, all right, and not to edify, you can make yourself look foolish because there's actually a point in this video where this Christian is bringing out a point, and he's actually right about the point, all right? But these individuals are falling into the trap, okay, that uh, Peter warned us about concerning the Apostle Paul, where you misconstrue his words, okay, to mean something other than what he's actually saying, all right? This is why the Spirit has to be guiding you when you deal with the New Testament, all right, and uh, the writings of the Apostle Paul who wrote the majority of the New Testament as his ministry was to go and teach the scattered Israelites outside of, you know, what was known as Judea Jeru or Jerusalem, okay, and Samaria, where the Jews were heavily populated that were raised in the customs, you know, Apostle Paul his ministry was to go and teach those scattered Israelites. That's why it speaks of Greek, okay? And you, uh, the, 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 the Greeks, the, neither Jew nor Greek, because when you go into the history, the Maccabean, you know, uh, captivity, the Greeks, many Israelites fell away to Hellenist Greek customs, okay? And they became what? Castaways. They were, you know, ultimately following the ways of the heathen. And had become a no people, Gentiles, heathen, pagans, okay, following after those traditions. But as the word spread abroad in Yahweh Shai's miracles, all right, and preachings of the disciples and, you know, the apostles and so forth, went out, many of these uh, Israelites, you know, through Yahweh Shai, which actually fulfills a law, all right, were able to be brought back into the fold. You know, Paul's ministry fulfills the law, all right, where you, you can return, all right, and I forget where it is, I believe it may be Levit Leviticus 25, I'll get it at some point if the spirit permits, but, um, you know, the apostle Paul went and preached to those uh, scattered Israelites, and many of the Jews, as we always talk about, had, you know, a problem with that as these Israelites were looked at as castaways. So when you read Paul's position, it can sometimes seem as though, you know, he's speaking contrary, all right, to the law and to the prophets and, you know, uh, ultimately going against the law, all right, and contradicting himself. But as we'll go into in this lesson, all right, we're going to defend the position of the Apostle Paul against the Sakari. As you hear them, you know, basically say that he's going off. He's causing confusion. All right. Um, this is Second Peter 3 and 15. And the account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. 
also right, in all his epistles speaking in them of these things which some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction so we have a warning of the head of the church peter and the, and the, the very interesting part about this is that they read the scripture they know it's here this is how you know that the heavenly father is involved the higher power is involved angels are involved all right certain men are only going to believe certain things certain men ain't going to believe certain things it is what it is all right the heavenly father through yahweh shah and his angels are in charge of that the elect will be kept in a way all right but you have particular israelites who just don't got it now in the nlt this same scripture says speaking of those of these things in all his letters some of his comments are hard to understand and those who are ignorant and unstable as you have a lot of unstable men have twisted his letters to mean something quite different just as they do with other parts of the scriptures and this will result in their destruction so you see men headed to destruction with a fitted hat on okay doing what the hell they want to do and ultimately perverting the scriptures but using them just like they use the book of hebrews Meanwhile, teaching Israel that it's not authority, but when they can use it for their argument, they will pull it out. The book of Hebrews is not the word of God. Okay, Songs of Solomon is talking about a woman picking a man to swallow his semen. Okay, amongst other crazy ass breakdowns, you can have sex on the Sabbath. Okay, we ain't gonna live forever in the kingdom. Amongst many, uh, other uh false doctrines but that's neither here nor there this video and the purpose of this video is to defend paul's position through the spirit and power of yahweh shai as i can see they don't understand it now another thing that these men said in this video is that they're perfect in the law they they, they keep the law 100 percent. they're perfect they don't sin at all okay now if that's true you wouldn't need yahweh shai all right and also if that's true that means you would have to not have broken one okay uh what's that scripture guilty okay in the book of james okay james 2 and 10 for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point he is guilty of all okay if we say we have no sin is that in the book of first john okay first john one and eight if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us so these these men are of the opinion that they keep the law perfectly using examples like uh you know john the baptist's father and mother as it says you know they were perfect let's see if we can find that Okay, it's in the book of Luke. Which we know John the Baptist was born to a family that descended directly from Aaron. All right, through one of his descendants, Abijah. So John the Baptist came from a family. Let's see here. Luke. Yeah, it may be in this chapter. Boom. Luke 1 and 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, which is John the Baptist's father, of the course of Abijah, and his wife uh, was one of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So as you can see here, John the Baptist's parents stem from a family that descend directly from Moses' brother Aaron. Okay, they had particular records back then. They were both righteous before the Most High and walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. So walking in the commandments and the ordinances of the Most High, blameless. So they were sticking to the traditions. You got to understand these Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, those of the circumcision, okay, they were responsible for our culture being, you know, ultimately uh, transferred from the Greek captivity all right, to the Roman captivity, 
which we know in the Greek captivity, it was the Maccabees, all right, that family who stood firm, you know. But we know that there was a lot of Israelites who fell away. So John the Baptist, father and mother, stem from that batch. Now we know, all right, that all fall short, all have sin. Does this mean that ultimately this sacrifice they offered up was acceptable to the Most High, all right, enough to bring us back as the Israelites to his people? No. Okay, ultimately it just means that when it comes to the technicalities and the ordinances that were required, you couldn't blame them. Okay, now they were in Jerusalem at this time. All right, they were in the temple doing the things that were required under that first covenant standard. Okay, you can't do that. Okay, because you could say, well, I keep all of the laws except, you know, the temple, well, the temple aspect. Well, you've offended in one. And it all boils down, all right, to the fact that, uh, what's that, uh, is that Ecclesiastes 7 and 20? Because Paul tells you that he's, you know, uh, blameless in the law, right? Give me one second here. In the book of, uh, is that Philippians? Yep. Philippians 3 and 6, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Paul was raised to a family, the Benjamites, who stuck to the traditions. He was of the circumcision. Okay? So according to the, the, the what was required all right, under that first covenant, you have Jake back then that was strict in it. They were doing it. Okay? If you go to the, the, the you know, they were of the, the lineage... They, they knew, you know, uh, who whose fathers, all right, uh, who their fathers were and wh wh what course of the priesthood their particular lineage went back to and what to do in the temple. They, they, they had that understanding back then. Paul, born of the tribe of Benjamin. All right, they were raised, you know, and educated in the ways of the law, the, 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 the ways of the Most High God, Yahweh. okay, the, the, the first covenant. They stuck to it. But don't we read about Paul saying, oh, wretched. <laughs> All right, Romans 7 and 24. This is Paul, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? All right, and you're in the body of death. We're all in the body of death. All right, and you're not keeping the law perfectly. Okay, you got people who say, well, I don't eat pork. Well, don't you know in that same chapter? Because, yeah, we don't eat pork. Right? What is that, Leviticus 11? Don't you know in that same chapter, right? We'll get into the video. That same chapter, uh, let's see, the pot, it tells you that if, let's see, cook, stove, okay, pot, let's see, it's in this chapter. Let's see here. Yep, verse 33, Leviticus 11 and 33. And every earthen vessel whereunto any of them fall it, whatsoever all right, is in it shall be unclean, and you shall break it. Okay? And we go to restaurants, right? You think that they are uh, uh, cooking all clean foods where you eat? Okay? It says, and of all the meat which may be eaten that is on the water, come, shall be unclean, yada, yada, yada. It says, in Everything whereupon any part of their carcass fall it shall be unclean, whether it be in oven or in ranges for pots. Okay, let's read this in the NLT. All right, the water to the big, to the, the big, the big man Alazar for giving us the NLT. He said he brought it out first. Well, thank you. All right, any object on which the carcasses of such an animal falls will be defiled. If it is in an oven or a hearth, it must be destroyed, for it is defiled, and you must treat it accordingly. So anything that these unclean things touch, you know, you're you're not supposed to eat all of it. You're supposed to destroy it. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be unclean. It should be broken. An oven, all right. They they cook unclean foods in these ovens. Okay, you move into a, a, a apartment. You know, the people that was using that oven before you, they were cooking damn sure cooking unclean foods. You eat off of grills at, at these different functions, <laughs> the world. 
you use their grill. All right, you written the spot out, but you're using their grill. You think they've only cooked clean foods there? You go to the restaurant, they're cooking your unclean food. Even if you say, well, clean the stove, right? When you say clean the stove, I'm allergic to this. All right, that stove should be broken. You can't keep the law here perfectly. What you can do, all right, is ultimately be justified by your faith. All right, now you keep the laws. Of course, we teach to keep the laws to the best of our ability. All right, but the standard of righteousness under this grace period, as we're going to show you, which they don't get, is faith. Which if you have faith, there are things you're going to do. But the most high, all right, Baha Shemi HaOshai is more, all right, uh, tied and, and, and more worried about the fact that you believe. It's your belief. Okay, as we're going to show you. And that was Paul's position. Furthermore, we all need the mercies of David. That's what we're all fighting for. And if you're perfect in the law, then you don't fall under this category, which is under the blood of Yahweh Shai. Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom Yahweh imputed not iniquity and whose spirit there is no gal. See, it's all about your inward man and in whose spirit there is no gal. You see, you have many men in the history of Israel who did all of these righteous things according to the law. Hey, well, we read about the, the wicked scribes and Pharisees. They were uh, uh, blameless in certain customs and traditions, right? But the inward man wasn't right. And we see a lot of these men who holler, you know, holler the law, the law, the law. You know, this is how we're justified, the law, we keep these laws. Their inward man is not right. Okay, and a lot of them speak more of what they're doing than what Yahweh Shai did for us and is going to do when he returns to deliver us, man. Okay, so blessed is the man in whom the Lord imputed not iniquity. And this is tied to the mercies of David, as we'll, we'll tap into that, the Lord willing, in this video. But let's get Isaiah 55 and then we'll jump into the video. Because none of us are perfect in the first covenant standard. That standard has been done away with. For us as a people, we needed a new way, all right? And that new way through Yahweh Shai's grace, through his blood, we received the Holy Spirit of promise so we can believe, man. It's a gift. So you can fulfill what the story said you would do, raising up in the latter days. That will require faith. What we're doing requires faith. The just shall live by faith, okay? Because you have people who have fringes on, right? Who boast in those very fringes, but they do the damnedest thing with the fringes on. Sending pictures of their ride to another man's woman that he just saluted. Hey, Shalom, brother, you go to your nasty ass to the bathroom. Okay, and you un you you uh pull your shirt up and you looking down at the fringes, but you're taking a picture of your ride, sending it to people, sending it to this a man uh, another man's wife. The, the, the damnedest things have been done throughout the history of me coming into the truth by men who boast in the law. Yet, when we bring out the law, these same individuals call us pedos and grapists because they're ashamed of ancient customs and how they look in this world. And they're not uh, 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 fair enough to understand that we're saying you, you, you're not supposed to do that now. Because we, we, we're not under the law. We're not sovereign. There's particular laws you cannot keep here. You see, all right, homosexuals every day. Okay? People changing their, their, their sex, pushing that agenda on children. You don't have the power to judge according to what the law says to do to people who do, do these things. You don't have that because you're not sovereign. So... What the Lord has promised us, let's just jump to the point, Isaiah 55 and 3, incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Okay, and ultimately we know David sinned some very serious transgressions that were worthy of death. He numbered Israel without being told by the Most High to do it. Moses was told to number Israel. David did it on his own accord. Okay, which could have been a, a, a worthy of death. Okay, uh, 
he murdered a man. Okay. Uh, worthy of death and committed adultery. He committed adultery with the man's wife. Right? Bathsheba. <laughs> and Solomon was born from that union. You see, the firstborn died, but Solomon was born from that adulterous union. Okay? So, David needed another justification process, which this was while the first covenant was still around. See, we're reading about David and his sins. Well, what we want is that same kind of mercy, which would require something outside of the law and its technicalities and its judgments and its punishments for doing particular things. And that's what these men don't understand as Apostle Paul and his position, all right, is that ultimately under Yahweh Shai, your sins is covered. Does this mean you can do what the hell you want to do? No. Okay? That's not what we're teaching here. But we must put some respect on that sacrifice and its importance to us. Give me one second. Hold up. Me. Close this window. Fucking weirdo looking at you doing a sit down from across the street. You know? You don't know who the hell out here out these days. All right. So let's uh <laughs> let's play this video, man, and have some fun with it. The next verse, and try again. So Galatians three twelve. Right. And the law is not of faith. Hold on, hold on. Now I'm reading it. Hold on, hold on. hold on, hold on. He said what? And the law is not of faith. In the law, did it tell you to have faith? Just say, I don't know, brother. You humble. Okay. Now, he said, in the law, does it say? All right, let's, re let's listen to him again. So I, can, uh, I want y'all to understand their position towards the Apostle Paul and what they're saying so that we can bring out the truth of the matter and hopefully they repent because they're wrong about their position on Apostle Paul. And I'm going to show you why. Oh, hold on. Now, reading it. Hold on, hold on. hold on, hold on. He said what? And the law is not of faith. In the law, did it tell you to have faith? Now he's reading Galatians 12, which Christians always do. All right. Now let's hear what Paul is talking about here. All right. <laughs> let's start at 10. And let's hear what Paul is saying. Now, he's speaking to the Galatians. This is a church that is scattered in Galatia. Okay? One of the churches that were raised up. Just like here in America, you have churches. Okay? The GMS Dallas, GMS, you know, uh, Buffalo, you know, the GMS Miami. You know, the, well, here, this is the modern-day Rome. That same process was taken, all right, happening back then. All right? With the scattered Israelites outside of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. They started to wake up, but these Gentiles who woke up and were brought back into the fold weren't brought back, okay, in the same sense these Jews were brought back, were raised in. Because the scriptures tell you the tents of Judah had to be saved first. Many of those Jews were raised in those traditions, but as the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, which Paul's ministry was to them, to preach to them and travel and preach to them, him and Barnabas and eventually other men took missions to do the work to raise these churches up. He's writing letters to these churches. Okay? And Galatians is one of those letters that stem from a judgment that came down in Acts the 15th chapter. All right? Where you had many Jews who were raised in the customs who believed in Yahweh Shai, who had friction with these Israelites who were coming in saying that they had to be circumcised to be saved and they had to be ultimately perfect in the law of Moses. They had to meet that standard in order to be saved and to be accepted back to the Most High. They struggled with that. Even believers in Yahweh Shai at times struggle with these things because this is what they know. This is what they were raised in. The strict traditions of the law. They, they, they went to the temple they were in, they were Israelites for real, right? Whereas you have these, you know, scattered Israelites who fell away in the book of Maccabees. Okay? That's why they were called Greeks. They fell away to Greek customs. So as they were waking up, 
all right, certain wicked Jews who didn't believe in Yahweh Shai, okay, even after the judgment, kept coming and messing with these churches, telling them that they ain't brought back in, they ain't welcome, the Lord go destroy them, they ain't perfect, they ain't circumcised, and these things, all right, you, you, you're you not a no people, nigga, we the Jews, we stuck to the traditions, you, y'all fell away, y'all ain't right, so Paul is writing this letter, Galatians 3 and 10, he says, for as many as are under the works of the law, that, and, and, and when you understand these, these, these arguing, these talking points, to be saved, to be made right with the most high, all right, is it the uh, uh, keeping of the law under this grace period, or is it your faith that justifies you? That's what we have to understand, okay? Now, of course, in the law, it speaks of Yahweh Shah coming, and that's the one we would have to have faith in. But under that first covenant, could you be justified by faith? That's one question. All right. As we listen to this video, you need to understand what they're saying. For as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all these things which are written in this book of the, of the law to do them. That was the standard of the first covenant that if you broke. The, the, these commandments and you continue not in all of the things that are written in this covenant you're going to be cursed that's why we're under the curses right now see now Yahweh Shai's sacrifice redeems us from the curses that are tied to that law okay and instead of boasting in that men are saying no I can be perfect in the law Instead of saying, man, we need Yahweh Shai. Instead of saying, whew, reading the law and, and understanding you can't meet this measure and being honest with yourself, you're using the law to make money. The 613 hoodies. You, you, you have Israel under this delusion that they are really, all right, fulfilling what was required under the law here in Babylon the Great. It's impossible. And when we say the law, we mean the first covenant standard. Even when we try to keep the law here, it is a defiled, it's, it, it, that is a sacrifice that would not be accepted under that first covenant. So if you're under the works of the law as your way of righteousness and justification, then you're under the curse. This is what Paul is saying. All right. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continue it not in all the things which are written in the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the works, pretty much, of the law, all right, in the sight of the Most High. For it is evident that the just shall live by faith, which he's quoting Habakkuk. This is written in the prophets, okay? He's quoting what is written in the prophets, because that's all they had back then. The New Testament wasn't written back then. He's quoting the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, Esau. Habakkuk is prophesying of this condition we be in where ultimately he makes it impossible for you all right to be justified by the law by the system he set up see that's why Yahweh Shai's sacrifice is so important man and you and, and when you when you lean on that for your comfort and not your own righteousness okay the most high is pleased with that now does that mean you lean on that and you just do whatever the hell you want to do you live a sinful wicked life no and that's what these people say that paul is promoting all right paul is in order all right with the church he just had his his uh, uh ministry his he was a vessel to go and preach to the gentiles behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by faith so paul in the book of galatians is quoting the, the book of Habakkuk, which the book of Habakkuk prophesies the chariots coming and destroying Babylon and delivering his people. So you don't think Paul understood that, that <laughs> you know, as he's quoting Isaiah, he's quoting J Jeremiah, he's quoting all these prophets. Don't you think he believed in the whole thing? He tells you himself, I believe all things that are written in the law and the prophets. So. The thing is, these men are stumbling over what he's saying here. See? Now, verse 
3, uh, Galatians 3 and 12 says, In the law, let's read 11 again, But no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Most High. That covenant was already broken, for it is evident that the just shall live by faith. That's how we go get out of here. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So what is this saying? What is this saying? Let's read this in the NLT, because basically what this is saying is under that first covenant, faith wasn't the, the, uh, the standard of being accepted with the most high. Okay? The standard was perfection in the law. The law, the first covenant, was not based upon being justified by faith. Okay? NLT. This way of faith is very different from the way of the law, which says it is through obeying the law that a person has life. Okay? The scriptures tell you under that first covenant that when you do these laws, you shall live. Leviticus 18 and 5. Ye shall keep, therefore, my statutes and my judgments, all right, which if a man do, he shall live in them, all right, I am the Lord, okay? So, so the, this is what gave you life under that first covenant was the strict keeping of these statutes, okay? <laughs> which this was the ministry of death. Not only did Adam's transgression lead to death but when we received that law all right that was a condemnation to us when we broke it okay which the lord wanted it that way he uh, uh he said that the uh he made the creature subject to vanity because he had a purpose he had a story he had a way he wanted us to get this kingdom so when it says the law is not of faith both of them are wrong okay because let's listen to you know what 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 ultimately this man is saying as we know now what this is saying in galatians the third chapter when it says the law is not of faith all right but the man that doeth them shall live in them this is why you have to sometimes in certain of these uh scriptures you have to go outside of the old english but sometimes you have you can't lean on the nlt the gnt and certain things like that sometimes it's all the spiritually discerned through the men of the Lord when we know when to bring out what and when not to bring out what. That's all the spirit handles that. Okay? We just flowing. Now, it's uh, the law, this the law is not a faith. As the, the Paul just said, that's how we're justified. The law is not a faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Yahweh Shai have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, who was under the law? The Israelites, who were, fell under a curse because they broke the law? The Israelites. The whole world ain't under the curse of the law. The curse of the law pertains to the Israelites. So he's speaking to Israelites who were in a, un, under the curse, all right, that came with disobedience, which is the captivity under the Romans at this time. See? Now we understand that him redeeming us from the curse of the law doesn't remove us immediately from the curses, but his sacrifice covers our sins wherein the law condemns us. See? We're going to be in the curses until we're delivered out of our final captivity. That's already set in stone and prophesied. To be redeemed from the curse of the law is ultimately to finally have victory over death because the first covenant was a ministration of death it only led to death because ultimately this flesh you're incapable of being perfect in these bodies in this condition you're in if the first covenant standard was our way of righteousness and having life we would die we would be perpetually cursed as a nation so Yahweh Shai has redeemed the Israelites from the curse of the law being made a curse from us for it is written, Curses everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles who needed a different justification process. They couldn't be judged to the standard of the, the technicalities of the law. Their way to be brought into the fold would be through faith, which is tied to Abraham, which had faith while he was uncircumcised. So the law condemns Abraham in a sense, right? 
Well, Abraham, which he eventually kept the law, but he received all of those blessings in the favor of the Most High through his faith before he did uh, uh, the, the circumcision. <clears throat> which, that was a big point of contention. They got to be circumcised to be saved. Well, Abraham was justified by the Most High while uncircumcised, which is why he's tied to these Gentiles. So the blessing of the Gentiles being brought into the fold as the tents of Judah had to be raised up first. It was the Gentiles believing on the miracles, believing on the word, believing on Yahweh Shai that will ultimately justify them. See, that they may receive the promise of the spirit through faith, the promise of the Holy Spirit. You see, and the promises that were given to Abraham were given to him Isaac and Jacob before we received the first covenant, before the law. Okay? So these are things we have to keep in mind. So let's let this play a little bit so you can now understand and listen to this guy. He said what? And the law is not of faith. In the law, did it tell you to have faith? Just say, I don't know, brother. You humble. Okay. We're going to show you that it tells you to have faith in the law. Showing you that Paul didn't know what he was talking about in Galatians. See, he's he's taking this writing as if Paul is saying, all right, uh, the, the law. Listen to him. You hear what he's saying. He just said Paul didn't know what he was talking about. But he's mis, cause he's misquoting, he's misrepresenting what Paul is saying. When Paul is saying the law is not of faith, he's not saying, all right, in the, in the law, statutes, and commandments, in the first five books, it doesn't talk about faith. Abraham's whole justification was faith. Okay? Faith, the, 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 the scriptures tell you faith. <laughs> uh, shh, what's that in the book of Hebrews? Let's get Hebrews 11, I believe. Hebrews 11. I mean, Hebrews the 11th chapter. I'm on my laptop. This thing is getting old, man. Trump, uh, the triumphs of faith. And when you read about these examples of faith, okay, they're, they're all in the, the Torah. Okay? Abel, where you find him, the Torah. Enoch, the Torah. Noah, the Torah. Abraham, the Torah. Okay? <laughs> There's evidence of faith all throughout, okay, the, uh, the, the, in the law, which the first five books are considered the law, the Torah, Tharawah, okay, the covenant, all right? So, he's misconstruing what Paul is saying. He's not saying there's no faith talked about, all right, in the, the uh, Old Testament. Listen again. Just say, I don't know, brother. You humble. Okay. We're going to show you that it tells you to have faith in the law. Showing you that Paul didn't know what he was talking about in Galatians. Did you see what I'm saying? They're saying that Paul is saying here that the law doesn't speak about faith. No, Paul is talking about the justification of what makes you right with the most high. All right. And basically, he's telling you here, though, you could not be justified by faith under the first covenant. That it was just impossible. Show me in the scriptures in the law where you could be justified by faith. This is what Paul is saying. Under that first covenant, could you say faith is my sacrifice? No. The only way you're able to do that is under Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. You see, and that's how you get the mercies of David. Which ultimately, if you're saying you're perfect in the law, then you don't need any sins to be covered. So Paul is not saying that the law doesn't talk about faith here. That's where you're wrong, my brother. And you're doing this in front of everybody. NLT, this way of faith is very different from the law. All right, we're under the law of liberty, grace. Where your justification is ultimately your faith, where you make your body a living sacrifice. 
this way of faith is very different from the way of the law, which says it is through obeying the law that a person has life. Let's get Deuteronomy 27. Okay. Deuteronomy 27 and 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and the people shall say amen. And Israel agreed to all of these things. You got to understand, this is why we're in hell right now. Because our forefathers, which in some shape, form, or fashion, we were all that we agreed. And, and in some shape, form, or fashion, we've all been guilty. We broke that covenant. So now that that covenant is broken through Yahweh Shai's blood, we now have a way back to the Father through the true high priest, through his sacrifice. And under that sacrifice, it is faith that confirms you. It is faith that justifies you. You could not say that under that first covenant. That's what Paul is saying. And then he goes on to, to, to tell you that Yahweh shall redeem you from the curse of the law. All right, let's get the book of uh, John. Book of John 1 and 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace, which you need grace. We're under grace. Okay. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai. You're not under the law. You're under grace. The law of liberty. There's still a measure. There's still a sacrifice. There's still a, a, a standard. The Lord still requires a sacrifice. It's just that it's been changed. He's upgraded it for us, man. Which is far better for us as we're not in Jerusalem. We're scattered. We've, we're at a disadvantage. We've bowed to idols. We have messed up to a point where we are worthy of death Psalms 130 and 3 we're going to play the video Psalms 130 and 3 if thou Yahweh should it mark iniquities O Lord who shall stand NLT Lord if you kept a record of our sins O Lord who could ever survive and these guys think that they could survive that's the scary part. And that's a very high-minded thought process to be walking around with. This is all we're saying. Acknowledge Yahweh Shah and put some respect on that sacrifice, man. Okay? And there's far more to keeping the law than the strict all right, technicalities of the law of Moses. The keeping the law is not taking the chip. Keeping the law is to abstain from these particular... Uh, uh, demonic practices that this world is going to try to lure you to bow to a lot of y'all ain't doing that a lot of y'all have been meshed and linked in with the world okay for the purpose of uh, uh you know uh clickbait all right and 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 uh basically drawing in you know the masses in a sense you know which hey if that's you know yo 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 stilo hey you know, y'all, y'all, we'll see how ultimately it works out. We stick to the simplicity in Yahweh Shai, which the Sakari weren't followers of Yahweh Shai. That's the, you know, something that just kind of gets overlooked when we say it, but they weren't. <laughs> they did their own thing. Paul didn't know he was I, and I'm going I'm to explain why. Did you know what happened? And so you heard him. Paul didn't know what he was talking about. So let's go back. We're going to show you that it tells you to have faith in the law. Showing you that Paul didn't know what he was talking about in Galatians. Paul didn't know what he was talking about. I, and I'm going to explain why. Did you know what happened in Acts uh, uh, 21? No. Acts 21 lets us know that Paul was corrected by the way he was trying to right. neglect certain parts of the law. For an example, circumcision, right? When we read Romans, Romans was after Galatians, right? I'm, I'm my bad. I keep moving. Romans is after Galatians. So when we read after the rebuke of Paul, Paul literally it's says, Romans and then which Paul wasn't rebuked. Okay. And Paul didn't speak against circumcision. All right. Ultimately, the order that even Peter, James and John agreed with was that ultimately we can't force these Gentiles to be circumcised in order to be saved. 
That's what the council in the book of Acts was all about. All right. And if you don't agree with that, then you are condemning Abraham who received the blessings while being uncircumcised. Now he eventually kept the law and got circumcised. Okay. But it was Abraham's faith that justified him with the most high. Okay. And the Gentiles are tied to that faith. If you, you can be an Israelite, but if you don't have the faith of Abraham, then you're not accounted as the seed. You can't just claim Abraham. You have to believe on the level of Abraham who believed that if the son the Lord blessed him with to pass down that, that, that blessing of having this great land, uh, he, he was told to offer him up and sacrifice him. He was told to sacrifice Isaac after being told this is the child through whom the blessing is going to be passed through. And he had faith enough, okay, to do that, all right? But the angel stopped him. But he was getting ready to sacrifice his son because when you read it in Hebrews, he, he believed that the Lord was going to raise him back up. That's the type of faith Abraham had. That's in the book of Hebrews. He believed. All right. OK. That, well, if you promise me this is the one who the blessing is going to be passed through. OK. And now you're telling me to sacrifice him. Well, I'm going to do it. But I believe you go raise him back up because you promised. I believe you. I have faith. You see what I'm saying? That's what this is all about. That's what this is talking about. Okay, and he did all of those things while being uncircumcised. That's what the book of Romans talks about. Okay, which according to the law, ultimately uh, uh, Abraham, if we apply the technicalities of the law to him, all right, he, if you're not circumcised, you're cut off from your people, right? So there was another justification all right, in favor that the Most High had over him, over those technicalities, which is what we're going to need under this grace period. Does that mean circumcision is a bad thing? No. But do you need it? It's a good thing. It's healthy. It's, the, it's our customs. You should be circumcised. But, hey, the, uh, the, the, the Heavenly Father can still accept you back if you're not. That's what Paul was teaching. All right. And when you read Acts, the 21st chapter, Okay. And again, Romans, the fourth chapter talks about that justification by faith evidence in the Old Testament. And that's what Paul was breaking down is that what shall we say then? All right. That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to flesh, have found for if Abraham were justified by works. He have whereof to glory. All right. But but uh, but not before the most high. Okay. It's NLT it. Okay. If his good deeds had made him acceptable to the Most High, he would have had something to post about, boast about, but that was not God's way. All right, because he did great things. All right, but 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 what ties us? All right, what makes his story so intriguing? All right, as a lot of people sleep slip over it, you know, it goes over their head is his faith. Okay. It says, "For the Scripture said, Abraham believed." And it was counted unto him for righteousness. See, it was Abraham's belief that made him right. And that's how the Gentiles would be justified. And Paul's ministry was, 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 was uh, tied to that. Genesis 15 and 6. And he believed in Yahweh and it counted to him for righteousness. Now, was Abraham circumcised right here? In this scripture, was Abraham circumcised? Nope. So his belief is what made him right with the most high. This is what Paul is breaking down to these these uh, wicked scribes, Pharisees, chief priests, and these guys who's coming up against the church. The same thing that was happening back then is happening now. See? So the scripture said, Abraham believed the most high and it was counted to him for righteousness. And the promise that was given to Abraham passed down to Isaac, passed down to Jacob, was only for the Israelites. Paul is writing to Israelites who were scattered in the Roman captivity. The fourth beast in Daniel, the seventh chapter. Now we're in a revival of that fourth beast. Okay. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Okay. And, and ultimately we will borrow the price under Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, man. Okay. It says when people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. Right. It says. 
but to him that work it not, but believeth on him, all right, that justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And see, we are the ones that, that ungodly, that we are those Gentiles. We all woke from idol worship, we, 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 and we turn back to our heritage through belief, through faith, and mere speech. And it turned our life around, and we're on the highways and the byways, man. Now, not everyone uh, uh, is right. Even in GMS, but what it's, what, 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 what it's all based upon is that faith, man. That's what ultimately will get us through this grace period. That will be our justification under this grace period. If it was the technicalities of the law, we would perpetually be under the curse. Right? So, and we didn't, we weren't raised as Jews, so we can't boast in that. We can do the best we can. It says, but people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in the most high who forgives sinners. And that's what it's all about. Forgiveness. We need forgiveness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom the Lord imputed righteousness without works. Because David at that point, all right, his actions could have basically his sins really deserve death. So the mercies of David are tied to the Gentiles because ultimately Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, his blood covers those sins. And upon his return, you're granted, all right, a covering. You're granted salvation. You're covered under that blood. You're blameless. You're justified. If we take away that blood and want to say, let me base my righteousness in being beamed upon that chariot upon the works of the law. Do you want to really take that chance? The, the, the perfection in the law is how you get on a chariot or the blood of Yahweh Shai. Which one would you choose? And this is what they're talking about here. Okay. Now. It says in verse nine, come at this blessedness. All right. Uh, then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say, all right, faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So the blessing ain't just for the circumcision, the Jews raised in the customs. It's also upon those who fell away and in spirit were uncircumcised, but they're receiving the circumcising of the heart, which the circumcision is all spiritual anyway. Okay? It represents something spiritual, but it is our custom. Okay, let's read, let's just uh, make it NLT. Romans 4 and 9. Now, is this blessing only for the Jews or is it also for the uncircumcised Gentiles? Well, okay, we have been saying that Abraham was counted as righteous by God because of his faith. How did this happen? Was it counted as righteous only after he was circumcised? Or was it before he was circumcised? Clearly, God accepted the Most High before he was circumcised. There you go. <laughs> Circumcision was a sign that Abraham already had faith. The fact that he got circumcised was faith. But he received all of those blessings before All right, he actually did that. And that's what ultimately justifies these Gentiles. This was Paul's ministry. To go and teach that kind of salvation, which the Jews had a problem with that. Now, let's listen to him again, because we got to deal with Acts 21. So, Paul ain't, uh, you, you misrepresent what Paul is saying. Okay. By the way, he was trying to neglect certain parts of the law. For an example, circumcision. Paul wasn't neglecting circumcision. Okay. He was just preaching all right, uh, the, the, another, all right, uh, the grace. He was speaking, he was speaking grace, man. That faith is the standard. Right? When we read Romans, Romans was after Galatians, right? I'm, I'm my bad, I keep moving. Romans is after Galatians. So when we read after the rebuke of Paul, Paul literally it's says... Romans and then Galatians. No, no, no. We're saying in the timeline, in biblical timeline, Galatians was wrote first. Then Romans was written, right? Okay. So we see certain contradictions in Galatians and Romans. Well, why are there contradictions? We know that the Bible don't contradict itself. 
there must have been the error. The error was in Acts 21, Paul being rebuked by Peter and the elders and him coming to correct the doctrine that he was teaching. And so let's deal with Acts, the 21st chapter. In the book of Galatians, I can show you that so in Acts 21. So when you get Acts, the 21st chapter, this is what he's talking about, because you have to understand. And that Paul was being warned that he shouldn't go back to Jerusalem. Because the the, 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 the Jew, he knew that the Jews, all right, were going to be after his ass. Now, before Paul woke up and followed Yahawashai, what was he doing? He was persecuting the church of Yahawashai because of those same arguments that the wicked scribes and Pharisees had. Before, because of those same principles that even some of the Jews who believed on Yahawashai had that were tied, all right, to, uh, uh, you know, things like circumcision as a must Okay, and if you weren't born and you didn't weren't circumcised on the eighth day, you ultimately you you ain't right. You a heathen forever. Because the scriptures say if you if you don't do certain things, you cut off from your people. So the Jews looked at the Gentiles and held firm to that belief. Okay, so as Paul's ministry, let's get Galatians the uh, second chapter. What's Paul's ministry? Paul's ministry is Galatians 2 and 7, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, which are the Israelite foreigners, okay, who according to the, the, uh, the, the law, are right, they're deemed uncircumcised, meaning they're, you know, ultimately they physically weren't circumcised in their penis, but their spirits, you look up this word circumcised or uncircumcision, Strong's G203, Akrabustia, Akrabustia. Having the foreskin uncircumcised, a Gentile, a condition in which the corrupt desires rooted in the flesh were not yet extinct. So you had corrupt desires that went against the law, and then you had the circumcision, which are the Jews. Per it ome, per it ome. All right. The act of right of circumcision, they of the circumcision is a term used of the Jews. Okay, of Christian gathered among the Jews, circumcised by faith. We are, are those who worship the most high in spirit and are of the circumcision of the flesh uh, in the spirit. Okay, so ultimately when you go into the circumcision, it can be a, a, a spiritual thing or it can be a physical thing. Okay. Or it can, you know, uh, speak to those Jews who were in Jerusalem who stuck to the traditions, man. So Paul's, all right, ministry and gospel, all right, was to the uncircumcision. Okay? Galatians 2 and 7. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So Peter stayed back in Jerusalem and dealt with the followers of Yahweh Shah there. Paul went and taught these other Israelites who were scattered outside of Jerusalem. For he that wrought effectually in Peter, all right, to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. So the Gentiles are the uncircumcision. Okay? And when you go to the book of Maccabees, it tells you our people became uncircumcised. Literally, they stopped circumcising themselves, but they came, became uncircumcised in spirit as well. All right? They just were doing things that were, were not conducive to life. Now, when you get Acts to 20 of chapter, because of Paul's position, because of him teaching these Gentiles and having to, you know, uh, bring them up under a, uh, a different standard, all right, than being perfect in the law and being raised as a Jew they were being brought in under a different standard which stems from Acts the 15th chapter okay you have to know about Acts the 15th chapter okay in order to break this down as well let's just tap into that a little bit Acts the 15th chapter was a council at Jerusalem all right this is what started the argument Acts 15 and 1 and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren all right, now we're coming into the fold, all right, and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. 
So this was the argument. You ain't going to get salvation if you ain't circumcised after the manner of Moses. That's not only talking about the physical circumcision of the penis, but you're coming up under those strict traditions. But the circumcision as well of the penis. Okay? Like, nigga, because remember, the Greek is fashion. The Greek way was not to be circumcised. So Israel had become accustomed to living this way, but some of them started to believe. And come back to the Lord, just like Abraham, who was of the lineage of Adam, through Seth, through Noah, through through uh, Shem, through Arphaxad, Eber, Peleg, all the way up to Terah, who had Abram, who at that time, they were following idols. But the Lord raised up Abram as he was in the physical Babylon and put the spirit on him. And he turned from those idols and had faith in the Most High while in an uncircumcised situation. All right. And that's us. That represents the Gentiles. That's why Abram and the Gentiles are tied together because the stories are the similar. It's the same story. Okay. The sons of God have been scattered. Here it is. You have a family of the sons of God. Okay. Living in uh, uh, Ur of the Chaldees, which is Babylon. OK, the area of Iraq and boom, you know, as they're worshiping idols, the Lord puts the spirit on Abram to remember himself and turn back to the righteous ways. And the Lord made covenants with him, promises to him that are very important to our nation. Yet you have men that want to take these promises and give them to all nations. That ain't how it work. So the argument here is that. Unless you circumcise after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. All right. Then it says, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension. All right. And disputation with them, they were arguing. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of them should go to Jerusalem up unto the apostles, which were Peter was, who was in Jerusalem. Okay. Because where are they here? This argument was taking place in Antioch, all right, which is outside of, okay, uh, 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 Jerusalem and Judea. So these certain men came down as the church was being raised up, the Gentiles having faith. <laughs> and they're like, well, uh, uh, look, if y'all ain't circumcised, y'all ain't, you can't be saved, nigga. You through. You, 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 you are no people. You cut off. So there was an argument. Paul was arguing, Paul and Barnabas was arguing with them. So the the uh, the the point was, look. Let's go to uh, uh, Jerusalem and question about how we got to hand, how we going to handle this. Something got to give. So they sailed to Jerusalem, right? So as they come amongst Peter, James, John, the disciples that actually walk with you, I was shy. Okay. James stands up and gives the judgment. Okay? And as the, the, the judgment is this. Even Peter himself said, look, <laughs> in this council. Where is that at? Peter said this. Acts 15 and 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye the most high to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Here it is. They're following Yahweh Shai, which neither our fathers nor us were able to bear. Here it is. Peter is admitting. In some shape, form, fashion, they missed the mark according to that first covenant. But you hear you're trying to put that yoke upon these new believers. This was going on. So the judgment was that this. Acts 15 and 19, wherefore the sentence is this, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles, because the Israelites will be scattered among the Gentiles, are turned into the Most High. Okay, well, is not that a part of the curse that we will be scattered among the heathen? So as we got scattered among the heathen, we learned their works. But some of us came back. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to the, unto the Most High. But we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols, which is of the law, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. These are all laws. 
there was a standard, right, that they had to hold to. But ultimately, we couldn't force circumcision on them as a uh, 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 a a must have or you ain't going to be saved. There was Titus who wasn't circumcised. He has a book in the Bible or his words, not the word of the most high. OK. Either him or Timothy. I forget which one, but he, he just, one of them decided not, you know, to get circumcised. Some did. But the, what made them uh, uh, accept it back to the most high was their faith in, in Yahweh Shai, man. So in Acts, the, uh, the uh, 21st chapter, Paul, after, you know, teaching and going and doing these great things among the Gentiles, he's on his way back to Jerusalem, right? <laughs> he's on his way back to Jerusalem, okay? Which he knew what was going to happen to him. He knew they were going to persecute him. People were telling Paul, as you read Acts 19, 20, they was saying, don't go back to Jerusalem, bro. He was like, look, nigga, I'm ready to die. Whatever it is, what it is. Paul was on fire. So when you get Acts, the 21st chapter, which this young man is speaking about here, saying that Paul went off. Let's read it. Let's listen to him again. Paul, Paul literally it's says, Romans and then Galatians. no, no, no. We're saying, showing you that Paul didn't know what he was in the law. Did it tell you to have faith? Just say, I don't know, brother. You humble. Okay. We're going to show you that it tells you to have faith in the law. Showing you that Paul didn't know what he was talking about in Galatians. Paul didn't know what he was talking I, And I'm going I'm to explain why. Did you know what happened in Acts uh, uh, 21? No. Acts 21 lets us know that Paul was corrected by the way he was trying to right. neglect certain parts of the law. For an example, circumcision, right? When we read Romans, Romans was after Galatians, right? I'm, I'm my bad. I keep moving. Romans is after Galatians. So when we read after the rebuke of Paul, Paul literally it's says... Romans and then Galatians. No, no, no. We're saying in the timeline, in biblical timeline, mm -hmm. Galatians was wrote first. Then Romans was written, right? Okay. So we see certain contradictions in Galatians and Romans. Well, why are there contradictions? We know that the Bible don't contradict itself. There must have been the error. The error was in Acts 21, Paul being rebuked by Peter and the elders, and him coming to correct the doctrine that he was teaching in the book of Galatians. I can show you that so in Acts saying, 21. So you're saying Galatians is a false book? I'm saying what Paul was teaching was a lack of understanding. So this isn't inspired by God? Hell no. No? What? He said Paul isn't inspired by God. Okay. What, 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 go, go to the scripture where it says uh, all scriptures is inspired by God. Is that First Timothy, right? Right. So who wrote that? It, who wrote that? Paul wrote Timothy. And what books were he reading when he said all scripture? Mm. The Torah and the Tanakh. Oh. So you can't say Paul's a well, epistles are so inspired by God. Galatians. Well, so he's saying Paul's epistles aren't inspired by God, right? Well, let's read what Yahweh Shai said. Um, hold up. Let's read what Yahweh Shai says concerning Paul. Let's see here. Give me one second. Let's make it red. Acts 9 and 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he, Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Okay? And the name will be ultimately, this gospel is going to be taught, all right, amongst all of the nations, man, because Israel is scattered among the nations. Okay? He he, he, he preached amongst the Jews when you read uh, Acts, okay, like the uh, 12th chapter going forth, okay, 11, 12, he, he, you know, Paul was uh, uh, preaching among the Jews. Yahweh Shai, and he was catching hell, and this is an example of it. So the Lord, Yahweh Shai, told you Paul was a chosen vessel unto him, all right, to go and preach this word, man, to the scattered Israelites, basically. Okay, he went before, uh, you know, the uh, Agrippa, which is of the Herodian dynasty, you know. Paul did it all, man. <laughs> now, 
You heard this guy, right? If you're still at this point in the video, you heard this guy, right? He said, Paul don't know what he's talking about. Hell no, his words ain't the word of God. This is the spirit these men are in. And they're basing it on Acts, the 21st chapter, and then we'll close it out. And then maybe we'll come back to that video, but I'm going to end it here. This is Acts, the 21st chapter. Okay, and you know, Paul is just going through all of these different lands, preaching the gospel, but he decides to go back to Jerusalem. So here in Acts 21, all right, we'll start at, uh, let's see here. Acts 21 and 19. Now remember the, the pillars of the church, James, Peter, John, you know, the 12 disciples at this council, they all agree, look, we're not going to trouble these Gentiles with the strict traditions of the, the, uh, the law. We, we, we're not going to force circumcision on them as a standard to be saved. Right? We all saw that in Acts the 15th chapter, they agreed with that. But look, stay away from strangled uh, animals, blood. You don't be eating no blood. Don't be, uh, uh, stay away from pollution of idols because the idols was tied to those wicked practices they were doing. Okay? The idols were tied to those wicked practices that they were doing, all right, including, uh, you know, shit, drinking blood, being moles. Jake was into all kind of stuff, man. That's why it says in Galatians 6 and 9, as such were some of you, meaning some of you used to do these very vile things, man. Whew. Anyway, Acts 21 and 18. This is when, uh, 17, it says, And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. Who's the brethren? The believers in Yahweh Shai. And the following day, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. So Paul walks up on the leadership. <laughs> right? It says, And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things the Most High wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry, because Paul will go and teach these Israelites who were scattered among the heathen and learn their works. They weren't raised as Jews. Paul's ministry was go to teach to them. And Paul was born in Tarshish, which when you read the, the book of Maccabees, that landmass was conquered by Ante Antiochus. So it was a heavy presence of Jake over there speaking uh, Greek. And Paul, you know, being raised in that area, uh, area as a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin he knew Greek as well so it was very important that the Lord set this man up so they were saluting Paul declaring all right basically like I hear the church is on fire they they you know but they're back in Jerusalem you have to understand the atmosphere here okay these are the believers in Yahweh Shai they're in Jerusalem right and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother. All right, they, they was like, let's get serious now. All of the, you know, all of the, you know, the hugging and kissing, all that. Let's, yeah, let's get to the, the, the point. All right. Look, bro. There are many thousands of Jews, all right, that are here which believe and they are all zealous after the law. So these are Jews which believed on Yahweh Shah that were zealous after the law. Okay, because while Paul is, uh, you know, going on his missions, you know, these Jews are back in Jerusalem, all right, and they're still doing particular uh, uh, things tied to that first covenant. Okay, they still have this, you know, they still have this, uh, you know, you know, this way that they were raised. I mean, you have to understand this was a struggle. This was a back and forth. This was an environment that is real, man. Okay, they, they, these men struggled too. These were things that happened on the planet Earth, man. So even followers, okay, of Yahweh Shai, okay, let's read what they're saying in the NLT. Let's get this in the NLT because, again, you got to read a lot of Paul's writings in the NLT, but you have to be careful as well. This is Acts 21. And 20, and hearing this, they praised the Most High and said, You know, dear brother, how many thousands of the Jews have also believed. They follow in Yahweh Shai. 
they all follow the law of, uh, and they all follow the law of Moses, Moses very seriously. <laughs> so you have people who believed in Yahweh Shah that were very, you know, still tedious in the law of Moses, man, because that was how they were raised. You see? But the, the, the leaders of the Jews here in Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn their backs on the law of Moses. They've heard that you teach them not to circumcise their children or to follow, all right, the Jewish customs, all right, or the customs of the Jews. This is the word that was out on Paul here in Acts 21. Now, is that what he's teaching, first of all? Is Paul teaching that you don't have to circumcise yourself? No, the, the arguments here that we're dealing with in the book of Galatians, okay? What was going on in the book of Galatians? What was the, the atmosphere in the book of Galatians? Okay, is that he, he, he's telling you about the council in Acts, the second chapter. He's telling you about that council. He's telling you, look, this is the order, man. Look, uh, we can't force these men to be circumcised. Did not James, Peter, John, did not they agree with that? In Acts, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, 15th chapter? So Paul is breaking it down here in Galatians. <laughs> you see? So they understood his ministry. Okay, Galatians 2 and 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, the leaders of the church, perceived that grace was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go to the heathen and they to the circumcision, the heathen, the Gentiles, the uncircumcision, those who were raised as, uh, you know, degenerates, like all of us, man. So in Acts 21, as he's going back to Jerusalem, People were misconstruing his talking points and his ministry as he couldn't come to these Gentiles from a perspective of a hardcore Jew. He had to come with grace. He had to come with mercy. <laughs> his teaching points had to be centered around the blood of Yahweh Shai. Now, were they just complete assholes and degenerate? No, they couldn't. There was an order that they were put in because you don't come into this truth just keeping all of the laws. It's a gradual process, man. And they were they gave them the blueprint for success because idols were a big part of their failure going back to the Greek Empire. This is the Roman Empire. The Greco-Roman Empire was full of idols, man, that run this world today. And all of those idols go back to uh, ancient Babylon, Samaria, man, Egypt, Canaan. So Paul here in Acts 21, as he's saying Paul was rebuked, Paul here is being told, look, this is the, 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 the word that's out on you, okay? And these niggas are going to try to kill you if they see you. So the Jewish leaders here in Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn their backs on the law of Moses because you had Jews who started to believe on Yahweh Shai. Okay, and they understood how the Gentiles would be brought in. They understood these things, man. They understood, you know, that's why Abraham, uh, uh, Paul was giving you the breakdown of how Abraham ties to the Gentiles. That's important to understand when you understand what's going on here. So this is what was uh, being said. You teaching the Jews to turn their back on the law of Moses. They have heard that you teach them not to circumcise their children or follow, all right, the, the, the Jewish customs, the law. What shall, what shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come, all right, and they go try to fight your ass. They go confront you. Here's what we want you to do. We have four men here, okay, who have completed their vow, okay? So the leadership, all right, the, the, of the church, okay, he, he's among the, the leadership. <laughs> okay, he, he went amongst James and the elders at Jerusalem. These are the, the disciples, man, the men of the Lord. Those who were with Yahweh Shai, Paul went amongst them. So they're like, look, to save you, 
Okay? This is what we want you to do. There are four men which have completed their vow, the Nazarite vow. You can read that, I believe, in number six. Go to, uh, with them to the temple and join them in a purification ceremony. All right? Paying for them to have their heads ritually all right, shaved. Then everyone will know that the rumors are false and that you yourself of, of, do observe the laws. So they came up with a ploy to take the heat off of Paul, man. Okay? It's still understood that Yahweh Shai sacrifice is the final sacrifice. These things are all still understood. They're not, uh, 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 you know, yes, yeah, sacrifices and things were still going on. But does that mean that those sacrifices outdid Yahweh Shai sacrifice? It was still understood that Yahweh Shai sacrifice among the Jews is the sacrifice. He is the high priest. That's what John the Baptist's ministry was all about. There's another priest coming as he was from the loins and lineage of Aaron. He's telling you the true high priest is coming. <laughs> so here it is. They're telling Paul. Okay. Go complete. All right. The, the, this, this Nazarite ritual that's tied to the law in Numbers, the sixth chapter. And ultimately, these people, these Jews will know, look. The rumors are false. Oh, he is keeping the law. This was to take the heat off of Paul, man, because they knew that this ministry of Paul's all right, was, was a very, very hostile all right, talking point, okay, that uh, was, would, would, you know, even lead to you being put to death. Remember, Paul was putting followers of Yahweh Shah to death, okay? As for the Gentile believers, this is what James John all right, Peter, this is what the, the elder said. As for the Gentile believers, they should do what we have already told them in the letter. They should abstain from eating food offered to idols, consuming blood, meat, all right, of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. This is what you stay away from, that nasty shit. Because those idols and the practices tied to them were absolutely detestable. Okay? This is why once the food, the meat that was sold using these, uh, uh, that, you know, these, these heathen sacrifices was sold in the shambles. Some of the Gentiles was like, well, can we eat it? Because they understood what, what, you know, the rituals that were tied to those cultures, man. So he was like, basically, you just now coming in, stay away from eating food offered to idols, stay away from consuming blood, stay away from strangled animals and sexual immorality these these are the, the the in this environment here in rome if you follow these laws this will make you successful don't worry about the circumcision right now just follow just keep this if you're moved to be circumcised at some point call hello y'all right that's 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 what's happening here but they're not cursing paul out they're agreeing with the, the council that was already set in Acts, the 15th chapter. They're still in agreement with what was uh, uh, ordered amongst all of the believers in Yahweh Shai, Jew and Paul and Barnabas, who was sent to uh, teach the Gentiles. There was an order given here in Acts, the 15th chapter. Here in Acts, the 21st chapter, James and the leadership here at Jerusalem are basically saying this is still the order. Right? So where where is Paul being cursed out and changing what he said in Galatians? That's not what's happening, and this dude is going off. That's not what Paul, you, you're misconstruing what Paul is saying. You're misconstruing the scriptures. You stumbled over Yahweh Shai, my man. Okay? And this is what happens. Uh, what's that in... Uh, that uh in peter where is it at uh hold up A stone of stumbling whoso believe it shall not be confounded where is that at it's in peter right you 
you you brothers have stumbled over your house, you guys, man. First Peter 2 and 6, wherefore it is also contained in scripture, behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So no you you guys are stumbling over your Shai, and here you're misrepresenting what's happening. First of all, they didn't check Paul. He was not corrected on anything that had already been ordered in Acts the 15th chapter. He was just told to do a, 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 a purification ceremony tied to a, a you know a a law in the book of Numbers that would take the heat off of him. All right, with the reputation that was being uh, uh, tied to him with his ministry to the Gentiles. Point blank period. So you, you're wrong, bro. Okay? So Paul went to the temple the next day and with other men, all right, they had already started the purification ritual. So he publicly announced the date when their vows would end and the sacrifices would be offered for each of them. Seven days were, uh, uh, were almost ended when some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple and roused up a mob against him and grabbed him. Yelling, men of Israel, help us. This man, they always call on everybody to, you know, come up against you. That's what the, when they call us grapers, they, they're telling, they're basically galvanizing their crowd to come up against these guys. This is the one who preaches against our people everywhere and tells everybody to disobey the Jewish laws. He speaks against the temple. He even defiles his holy place by bringing in Gentiles. So they're just going in. They're trying to rouse every emotion amongst these Jews to, to come up against Paul and put him to death or come, you know, or, or, or have him arrested. All right. For earlier that day, they had seen him in the city with Trump, Trump Hifmus, all right, a Gentile from Ephesus. And they assumed Paul had taken him into the temple. All right. Now. Just because you see Gentile from Ephesus don't mean it's an actual heathen, man. Who was the book of Ephesians wrote to? Who was in Ephesus? Okay? When you read Ephesians, the first chapter, who was it written to? Ephesians 1 and 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of the Most High to be an apostle of Yahweh Shai. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus. Who are faithful followers of Yahweh Shai. Let's get James 1. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord Yahweh Shai. And this is Yahweh Shai's brother. Because the other James have been put to death already in the book of Acts. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Okay, when you look up that word scattered, it's the dispersed Jews, the Israelites among the Gentiles, man. Okay, and many that were literally of the physical seed of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi have been scattered among the Greeks and fell away, but they came back. So this is all to the, the scattered Israelites who are scattered in all of these different regions, man. So this ain't, they, the, the argument here wasn't that uh, Paul was bringing in a literal uh, heathen into the, the, uh, the fold, okay, into the temple. No, they were mad that these, these castaways through his ministry who were uncircumcised, who were looked at, you know, as a no people, who weren't accepted back in the eyes of these, you know, uh, you know, because if you go according to that covenant, you threw. Okay, if you go according to that covenant, you threw. You need Yahweh Shai's blood. So Paul's position was very important to us being able to even, you know, be considered to be brought back to the Most High in these circumstances. It's Paul's ministry, all right, that we are ultimately uh, free, okay, from the the, uh, the yoke of the law, all right, as we've been scattered away, and we're not in Jerusalem. We 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 don't we weren't raised as Jews. We're at a disadvantage, man. So where in this scripture was Paul checked and corrected a doctrine? 
That's not what this is talking about. I can if I want to, but I believe Paul to be a historical figure. So therefore, I believe Paul wrote that, right? Like whoever whoever was writing that for Paul. So we're not, hold on, like, hold on, we're brother. Not that, bro. like, if hold on, rejecting... brother, 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 brother. We're not rejecting the book. We're rejecting a man, right? right? So for an example, is Easter in Acts 21 the actual holiday that they were celebrating? I don't know. It was Passover, brother, oh. right? Yeah, they were celebrating the Passover, Acts the 13th chapter. It says Easter, but when you go into the Word, it's actually the Passover. So we know that English, as this book has been translated, there. that's why we go into the Hebrew. Okay? That's why we go into words. Okay? But you're saying that Paul, all right, is not inspired. His, all of his writings ain't inspired. But then you'll go to Paul to make points. It's very weird. But anyway... I just wanted to touch into that, man. Hopefully, I'll edify on to the next. Shalom.